Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about what the future of local game store look like. Now I have a local game store of my own. We are, I wouldn't say experiencing financial difficulties, but whenever you buy out a company, so at that one point, I only own 29% of the company. Now I own 80%. Well, that 51% is a very painful buyout. Uh, it is a lot of money. And I have finally, I can finally say I now own 80% of the company. And there's still a lot of stuff I need to do. Get payment processors, banks and stuff. It's like starting a new company from scratch. Not as bad, but uh, very close. So MTG line has been put on the back burner. But I wanted to show you how a store looks like. So this is Hunter Pence's store. You can see there's modern background, there's nice lighting, it's brand new. Hunter Pence obviously is a famous baseball player. His wife Alexis is a famous YouTube personality. And they also hired Ming, or they partnered with Ming, who is a famous person on TV. So they have baseball player, TV, YouTube personality. They also do Twitch. They are offering coffee. It's gonna be higher end. So in the beginning, Magic stores were very bad. They had bad customer service. The tournament organizer was very bad, maybe even a sexual offender, and not a great experience. People were farting all over the place. People didn't take showers. You wouldn't come to this place and not take a shower for a week, right? This is a fancy place, and I can't wait to do a pre-release here. I'm hoping they are going to offer pre-releases because I would actually travel. It's really far from where I live, but not too far from where I work. I would travel here because I think it's a good experience. Um, it's going to be professional. It's going to be clean. It'll, you might even meet Hunter Pence. You might even meet Ming or Alexis. Pretty good stuff. Or, and they do Twitch too. So the model... A lot of you don't believe me when I say this, but out of the eight or nine, maybe my subgroup of people who want to sell me their inventory, they're just uh, very bad, hence why they're in business, out of going out of business and want to sell me their inventory. They don't have websites. They don't have a website. This has, they have a Twitch here. So this company, Coral Sword, has Twitch. It has, it'll probably be on TV. It's already been featured on many articles. A lot, a lot of positive press about it. And again, you have Hunter Pence, Alexis, and Ming social media, which is larger than anything that you could really have as a regular store if you open today. Now, the other model is Rudy. So Rudy has an interesting model too. I don't think he has employees. I've never seen an employee, which I found kind of strange because when you look at uh, Dariums, it's all about the employees, right? And you know their names, and there's a bunch of them. Here in Rudy, I don't think Rudy has F and M. I don't think Rudy has employees, and I could be wrong. If I am, correct me. But his model is the reverse of the Hunter Pence model. So you gotta go big or go with what Rudy is doing, which is an internet personality, and he makes plenty of money. Don't think Rudy is poor, and don't think Rudy does not understand the financial implications of being on YouTube and being, quote, a celebrity. Makes sense. Um, I've always wondered why Tolarian Community College did not does not open a game store because he could sell product, he could sell sleeves. He, um, all he does is promote product, right? That's the, I mean, not all he does, but that's the, that was what made his channel big was the sleeve reviews, the binder reviews, the deck box reviews. He could sell them. So if he liked the deck box, he could sell them. Right now he's doing a, athlete program with uh, ultra pro and card kingdom i believe so whenever you buy from the card kingdom he gets money but why why do that why doesn't he open his own store like rudy right and then sell to his patrons i'm sure he can get a very good offer from wizard of the coast i'm sure whatever game sports and more or sports and games is getting he he can get the same deal so this is the evolution of your local game store. Um, when I was little, it was okay to go to this shady place, hole in the wall, because that's all we had and we didn't know better. But once you grow up and you become old like I am, 
you realize I, I do want coffee. I don't want to play with a bunch of smelly people. And I'm willing to pay a premium for it. So here you can see good equipment. They are on Twitch. They're streaming. They're, they have a Twitch channel. Clearly, most people don't even have, most stores don't even have a Twitch channel. This is the, you're either going to do the Rudy model, which is 100% digital, or you're going to do this model, which is we're going to go for higher margins. We're going to go for people who are big spenders. The, the reason local game stores are going broke is because they're not attracting the right audience. I spend, you no, know, at DNA Comics, I've spent thousands of dollars on sets before. I no, and at Groovy Geckos, when I spent money and no one would even pay the F and M, five dollars was too much, right? They wanted free F and M, they wanted free pizza. I get it. Stores, you know, you go to a store and you may not have that much money. Maybe you're in college, maybe you're in high school, maybe you're transitioning between jobs, maybe you don't have a job, and you're penny pinching everywhere. But as a store, would you rather have people who are interested in fancy five, six dollar cups of coffee and have higher margins on these same board games, but provide a better customer service and better atmosphere and a better place to buy stuff? Or would you rather have, you know, customers who don't spend money? Uh, the reason that my pre the previous store I went to, Groovy Get Coach, went bankrupt was not because they didn't have customers. They didn't they'd had plenty of customers. They had customers that did not spend money. At the end of the day, if you have 100 people and they're not buying anything, that's not good for the store. Yes, it's all about community, yeah, but at the end of the day, you got somebody's got to pay the bills, right? Someone has to pay the bills. So this model, this new coffee game store model is going to, it's already trending. It's already in many places. And I can only see more of them because they're going to outcompete. You can either go Rudy, totally digital, save on your overhead, don't have employees, just give them the lowest price, be a YouTube celebrity, go on social media, promote yourself. That works well. That works extremely well. Or you go big like Hunter Pence, Alexis, and Ming. And you just bring some celebrities in who own the store. They get lots of news coverage, lots of good digital marketing, lots of good search engine optimization. You just Google it if you don't know what that means. They're already featured in many articles. They have a Twitch channel. They have a really great Facebook page. And it's coffee. So already when you associate coffee, you don't associate that with Magic the Gathering many times. I mean, it's getting more and more common. You associate that with, okay, if I'm going to buy a, I'm going to spend a $6, I'm going to spend $6 on a cup of coffee, then I'm probably willing, not going to penny pinch you on this one card. So you're either going with the best price model, which is Rudy's model for the most part, I know some of his prices are low, eh, they're okay. Like he knows, and I know that he buys from David Adams. So he knows what the price point of David Adams is. Right, there's further discounts that I'm sure that he gets that I may not get even, but even in discounts I get the five percent off is pretty a lot a lot. And you can stack coupons and I'm not gonna go into that right now. But my gosh, it's it's interesting. You gotta go big or go home. Go big or go home, because that's the only way that this would work. Uh, otherwise, for the most part you're going to see these local game stores that are hole in wall places where people are not showering for months, that people are smelly. These places are going to go away and what's going to replace them is a Hunter Pinch like store. I think that's an improvement. Uh, yes, it's going to cost more money, but you will have, like you cannot, there's a whole breed of magic player, whole generation of magic players who are so concerned about expected value when the expected value of magic already is low. Like you would never have another hobby where you're concerned about making an extra five cents or making an extra 50 cents, right? It's your hobby. It's what you do for fun. I don't want to argue on card. I don't trade anymore because I don't like arguing on card prices. It's not worth it in my opinion. Like, it's just not worth that. Like, okay, you know, why are you haggling me? I'm, you know, I had a long day of work. This is not what I want to go into, right? 
I know some people like it, but I personally don't like it anymore. This is the evolution, and eventually um, you're going to see more and more celebrities invest in it because it is a good investment if you do it correctly. The margins are very high on coffee. The margins are very high on board games. Uh, I know because Dave and Adams, whenever they have a board game sale, you know, a four, fifty dollar board game becomes like two bucks. Like they have a sale on Adventure Time, the card game. I, I'm not too familiar with it, but it's forty bucks. You can get it for five bucks now. I mean, it's just paper, right? It's just cardboard. The printing production, the you know, creativity. Once it's like um, intellectual property. Once it's designed, then anyone can make it. You could have a Chinese counterfeit company, and they could make the same th- same card game for like a, a dollar, maybe less. But anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.